Soon when I became a teenager, I realized that I needed ready-made clothes and there weren't any because there were no ready-made clothes. We're talking in 19, mid 60s. I would go and procure some amount of fabric so that my mother, my mother would teach me how to cut and sew them. And I guess I just learned the art of fusion with our very traditional ways at a very young age. So my journey actually started by all these women who wanted to be dressed well and invited me into their homes, introduced me to their friends. And that's how my circle grew. And what I started from home in 1983, on 1985, it led me to make something more concrete in the form of a business because I could entertain more people, get more collections ready. And that's how I opened up my first shop on Green Street on the corner of the roundabout in Plashet Grove. And I tell you what, that window would make everyone stop and look. And I would be mesmerized because there were people who would come in from all walks of life to see what I could actually create for them. And because it was traditionally inspired, but Western cut, it is how it took off as fusion wear, a very modern, inspired look, East and West fusion. I can't look back from there because from that small shop, I moved to a bigger premises on 117 Green Street, which again became smaller. And in 104 Green Street, I moved in 2005 because I need more space. So I had a special bespoke bridal area in the basement, actually. And on the ground floor, I had my massive collections, which would be from casuals to party wear to seasonal wear or festive wear. And I introduced men's wear. It took a couple of years before other shops started uh, arriving on the street only because they saw the potential of where and the, amongst the first few who actually came was Neelium Beauty and found a space on Green Street so that it would get easier for me to send customers to her from my business. And within a couple of years, we actually had most prominently, you know, Bhanji Gokul Das then uh, who moved from High Street North to Green Street seeing the potential. And obviously this community now became bigger because of the demand and the supply also grew bigger because now we were recommending seeing the need of a niche product suiting the ethnic consumer on the street. I traveled India extensively and like a sponge I really absorbed every area what it had to offer, every ethnicity within India I absorbed. I actually used it all on entire collections that I've done so far, from various regions to to various formats of embroidery to the various color schemes I could blend and work on together. When you leave me in a shop which has some of the most beautiful fabrics, I get lost. I get, it's so difficult to come out of it. I always used never short of 60 to 80 grams of silk or 80 to 60 grams of cotton or modal because it always hung well on the body. It w It wouldn't have a static effect where it would cling because it never had any polyester yarn in it. But I wanted always to have something that would float around the body, be able to carry the image of the cut and style that I had got into my clothes. And I, I do remember my customers always saying that there's no way we can judge your clothes on a hanger till we try them on, purely because they take on a totally different character when it's worn on the person. And the whole idea always for me was that I always wanted to enhance a woman and give her that empowerment of looking beautiful and feminine. And so I always used my clothes as a language to convey beauty. And it all started actually with East Nine newspaper initially, who used to hold the rich list awards. And that was where it all started with my doing the uh, celebs. Somehow it was always taken for granted when you're looking to dress somebody up in this, uh, a, a, any important person up, whether they was related to films or social life or very prestigious jobs or businesses, turn to money. She will ensure that you look the best. I do feel very lucky that I was at the right time at the right place for us to flourish and gain more business and be able to establish our brand name in so much of prominence that there were 
companies talking about even in India of the prominence of two, three major fashion brands on Green Street who were taking the limelight of the ethnic fashion trade in UK. I owe all my entire success to the very appreciative audience I've had in my four generations that I've been catering to from celebs to the ordinary person off the street. There were a couple of reasons why I actually left Green Street, uh, reasons that actually made me leave, not that I actually wanted to. The first thing was that uh, we actually had very high rates of the area, which was not meeting our profitability. And I was not able to balance my books with the kind of expectancy of the customer comparing me with the mass product on the street, the copies, the lookalikes that were already existing and to the actual service I was offering. And besides, the biggest drawback we felt was post-Olympics. Much as I campaigned for Olympics to come to Newham, it actually put a nail in the coffin for me on my presence, rather, purely because it took away the parking facilities we were enjoying for our customers. I set up this shop, which is a specialist boutique again, to meet my standards of services and marketing that my brand is known for and my services are known for, which had become difficult in Green Street, much as I love that street. I was there for 30 years. I helped it grow and looked at it as my baby. So <laughs> I guess that's where I had to draw the line and um, move on. Both my children at a very tender age spent a lot of time with me in my creations, whether it was working in my workshop and cutting and draping fabrics or whether it was having my artisans sitting with me and we working on the detailing of how garments should be presented and worked upon and finished. And I think these kids observed so much from such a young age, watching their mother do so much. They both had inherent flair, I would say, for art. They had the talent to actually experiment and create and were able to take this forward. And I guess it carries on, the legacy continues. <laughs>